You know what, I'm such a plum. I filmed this earlier and I forgot to attach the mic. So this is my second go, but hopefully it'll be more efficient. Hey guys, welcome back to another DJI Air 3 video. It's been a minute since I said that. Now there was a gap in the weather a couple weeks ago. It was a lovely spring, 16 degrees here in Toronto, nice and sunny, perfect to go take the drone out, fly and test out the DJI Air 3 wide angle lens here. And then the week later, it was minus three, doing my second flight and it was freezing cold. So massive contrast within a week here. However, I got the footage that I needed to create this video for you guys because I've been wanting to do this for a while. So in this video, we're gonna cover some information about the product, use cases, testing, and then my final thoughts. If you're new, hello, my name is Demetrios and I create videos on drones, photography, and everything in between. And it's a mix of entertaining and educational content. Subscribe to stay up to date. Now, let's take a look at the DJI Air 3 wide angle lens. let's jump straight into some product information with this. So I bought this direct from DJI. They didn't send it to me. This isn't sponsored in any way, but someone did mention in the comments to make this video. So thank you. And this is something cool to add to the DJI 3 kit that I have and this series of videos for you guys to learn. So this is a wide angle lens. It has 114 degree field of view. So that's 14 millimeters compared to the standard 24 that you get with the regular lens and the regular ND filters that DJI and other third parties provide. It weighs 9.2 grams. Keep a note of that and I'll explain why in a minute. Now this set me back 49 US dollars. That's around 67 Canadian. And then with shipping, that was 12 US dollars plus tax, you know. So I ended up spending like a hundred bucks, but I ordered some spare props as well. Now this is fairly straightforward to install. It's just like the other filters. You twist, you pull off, and then all you do is you put back on and twist and it locks in place and you're good, super easy. I think that pretty much covers the product info. There's not much else that I can really talk about. Oh, other than it comes with this case as well, which is pretty sweet, pretty nice that it comes with this and it's nice and small and handy. Now let's move on to some of my testing. Now we'll cover the first flight first, that nice spring summer evening. Spring summer evening, spring evening. So I wanted to test the basics, you know, photo and video. And to make it fair, what I did is I used waypoints. And what I did is with the photos, I just flew at several locations, framed the shot, hit C1 to record that point and the angle uh, for the lens, and then take a photo at each of those locations. And then I did the same for video where I just, hit a start and end point, record all that. And that way it's the same line and the same shots for both the 24 and the 14 millimeter, the wide angle lens. So let's take a look at some of these sample shots for photos, first of all. So you can see there is a lot more width and frame and this can be useful. And I'm gonna explain that in a moment. Do notice though, that with the photos, you are gonna get this warping on the edges. So buildings aren't gonna look straight not the end of the world. Also, depending how high you are, you do notice the horizon isn't straight either and it's gonna have this curb effect too. So while we're looking through all these photos from the first flight, I'm just gonna throw in the second flight as well, which was a lot cooler, but it does have the same preset that I've used. This is my preset, so if you're interested, check out my, my website or in the description of that box down below. Now let's move on to the video. So again, using waypoints, you having the same path, you can see how much wider this is. Again, because it's a wide angle, even though with video there is a small crop in, you do notice on the edges that it is curved. The horizon, depending how high you are, is gonna be curved as well. There is gonna be a difference though when you're shooting in auto versus promo, depending on the time of day and how much light there is. There is no ND that can attach on top of this or internal NDs on the drone. So if you are shooting video, and you, you have to put it in auto because if you put it in pro mode, you're gonna have to put it on auto shutter so the shutter speed can adjust the exposure of the shot. So for the purpose of this video, I just stuck to auto and then just used minus three, minus seven for exposing the shot and let the drone do the work. Now there's a couple of other things I wanted to test as well, some other features. I did test hyperlapses, but again, these are just a series of photos. This came out really cool and I really love this. 
I did share it on my Instagram stories. So hyperlapses work with the DJI wide angle lens. I also wanted to test out panoramas and behold, when I went to go and shoot a panorama, it just popped up with a message, wide angle lens attached, cannot use this uh, feature. So I thought, okay, not the end of the world. So what I did to get around this was do a manual one. So I just picked a spot in the sky and then all I did was take a photo and then pivot the drone ever so slightly. So if you're using them, as long as you have plenty of overlap, just keep rotating the drone, taking a picture at each point. And this is what a manual panorama looks like using the wide angle lens. Not bad. I also wanted to try 360 photos, but again, this gave me the same message with the panoramas, wide angle lens attached, cannot use this feature. Again, not end of the world. You could probably do this manually, but I don't think I'm gonna be, wanna be there for so long taking manual shots and it's gonna be very difficult to do. However, if one of you attempts this, tag me, let me know. It'd be really cool to see a 360 degree photo using the wide angle lens. Now let's move on to some of the use cases for the wide angle lens. Now you're probably thinking like, why would I wanna spend 50 bucks on a wide angle lens? I'm happy with a 24 millimeter, the standard that you get. And that's perfectly fine. There is no obligation to buy this if it's gonna make any difference to your photo, unless you want the extra width. However, I figured out why I, this became useful to me. So round where the well is, I have taken photos here in the past and flown here in the past. To be able to fit it in the frame, I had to fly further back. However, there was a building behind me. So it was still not enough uh, width on the 24 millimeter. So I, even changing my angle, I did manage to squeeze it in, but it wasn't what I had envisioned in my head. As soon as I put the wide angle lens on, I managed to fit the whole building within that one shot without, and I still have plenty of room behind me with the drone. If you're in downtown areas and there's a lot of high rises and there's not much room between when you're flying between buildings and you want to be able to fit everything in frame, the wide angle lens is going to be really handy for that. The other one as well is if you want to shoot some landscapes and you want extra width and not use panorama feature because when using panorama features, it just adds to your workflow. So unless you use DJI's input, which is just a JPEG, but if you want to color grade yourself, you're going to have to put it into Lightroom stitch them together first and then add your preset or color grade as you wish. Whereas with the wide angle lens, you can just take one shot and you're done. There's no extra workflow added. So those are the two use cases you can have with the wide angle lens. If you can think of anything else, let me know in the comment section down below. Now let's move on to my final thoughts with the DJI wide angle lens. Again, I bought this just for, well, creating this YouTube video, something fun, something to show you guys. For 50 bucks, I don't think that's that bad considering when you buy other filters, they're gonna cost around that much, but those are NDs. Price-wise, I don't think it's too expensive and I don't think it's too cheap. It's direct from DJI, it's gonna be good quality as well. Now, remember at the beginning of the video when I said this weighed 9.2 grams? Now, the reason for that is that when you do attach this, the gimbal will suddenly tilt down but that's the drone is off at this point. The minute you boot it up, the gimbal's gonna balance and stay straight, so you're gonna be perfectly fine. But just notice it is heavier and you can feel the weight between the regular lens on the DJI 3 and the wide angle lens. Now, the other thing here to notice is that you can't switch between, well, 14 and 24 millimeter. So you're gonna have to pick your shots or plan your shots beforehand when using this. So I would send the drone up, take all the wide angle shots with the wide angle lens, then land back down, put the regular one on or your ND filters or other creative filters you have. And you can check out, well, I made a bunch of videos on these, but I'll link one of them up here. So you just have to think about that, especially when you're flying, you don't want the impracticality of landing, taking off, landing, taking off. You just wanna maximize your flight time as possible. The other thing here is that there is no ND version of this wide angle lens. And the thing to note there is that when you are shooting video, you're probably best to put this in auto, let the drone do the work, but you're not gonna get that natural motion blur unless you're shooting in ideal conditions. So let's say sunrise or sunset when there's just enough light where you can have your shutter speed double your frame rate, but these conditions are gonna be always changing and fluctuating. Just take that into account, probably just put it in auto and let the drone do the work. You're just not gonna have that natural motion blur. This is why I say plan your shots, 
get the shots that you need with the wide angle, then stick back on an ND filter or creative filter, whatever you're using. This is where I think internal NDs for drones will come in handy. And the other thing as well, when I did show you earlier with all the photos and videos is that you have this curbing or warping effect on buildings and horizon. Again, not the end of the world. It's something that you have to factor in. I kind of like it. You can try and attempt to fix this in whatever photo program you're using it. I tried in Lightroom and I wasn't a fan of it once it was fixed because it just became all weird. So you just embrace the creativity, embrace the curbs of the buildings, embrace how wide this lens is and what it can capture. Okay, that is everything about the DJI Air 3 wide angle lens. If there's anything you want to learn about the DJI Air 3, let me know in the comment section down below. Also, let me know what drone you're flying. Is the DJI Air 3 one of those drones you wish to upgrade to? And I have had a bunch of you in the comments saying, Thank you for your videos. I've just bought the Air 3. I'm gonna watch all your videos. I appreciate that a lot. So thanks very much, guys. Let's keep this going. If you have anything, let me know in the comments. Subscribe for more videos on drones, photography, and everything in between. And YouTube recommends you watch this video next. See you in the next one. Peace.